Hey everyone, this is Scarlett Grace from UnseenSeraph.com and today we're going to talk about the concept of everyone is you pushed out. You may have heard the phrase, everyone is you pushed out. Maybe you've heard that everyone you meet is a mirror of you, or everyone is a projection of you. But what does that mean, and how does it help you manifest your desires? Although the concept itself exists in many traditions, and many people have spoken about it, the phrase, everyone is you pushed out, is usually associated with Neville Goddard a well-known actor from the Barbados who became famous for his lectures on manifestation that he gave in New York and other parts of the United States during the first half of the 20th century. Neville Goddard spoke about this concept in many of his lectures. Here is an example from a lecture from 1959. The whole vast world is no more than man's imagining pushed out. I must qualify that by saying that the world outside of man is dead, but man is a living soul, and it responds to man, yet man is sound asleep and does not know it. The Lord God placed man in a profound sleep, and as he sleeps, the world responds as in a dream, for man does not know he is asleep, and then he moves from a state of sleep, where he is only a living soul, to an awakened state where he is a life-giving spirit. And now he can himself create, for everything is responding to an activity in man, which is imagination. The eternal body of man is all imagination. That is God himself, Blake. So what does everyone is you pushed out actually mean, and how can it help you manifest your dream life? Everyone is you pushed out simply means that every single person you meet is actually you. This may sound hard to believe, but hear me out. You know how in dreams there is a you that resembles your physical body, and then there are other characters, whether that's family, friends, or a serial killer with an ex? It's your dream though, which means no one is actually there but you. All the characters in your dream were created by you, by your own mind, by your imagination. Not just the character you embody in your dream, the one that looks like the physical you, but all characters. Every person you meet is actually you. Just like the characters in your dream all look like individual people, but they were in truth constructed by your own mind, so are the people in your waking life. And just like most people, unless they train themselves in lucid dreaming, so that they can realize they're dreaming while still inside a dream, don't realize they're dreaming until they wake up. We don't realize that every person we meet is a reflection of us in waking life either. In lucid dreaming, people train themselves to wake up inside a dream, meaning to realize it's actually a dream, and then this allows them to take control of the dream and change things like people's reactions, the scenery, the things they can do, etc. By realizing that the same is true in waking life, that everyone is you pushed out, we can take control of our waking experience and change things in ways that were very difficult or impossible before. Essentially, everybody is going to show up in your reality exactly as you think they're going to. If you have thoughts or beliefs, like for example, this person always does that, or men can't be trusted, or women are bad drivers, or people always think I'm boring, then people are going to do exactly that. Let me give you an example from my life. I'm a pretty short person. I'm maybe five foot one, and I have a cousin who's maybe an inch shorter than me. I personally never had an issue with my height. I don't really think that being tall is better than being short or vice versa. I'm short. It's just a fact. To me, it doesn't mean anything. My cousin, on the other hand, is obsessed with her height, to the point that if someone asks me how tall I am, she will kick me under the table to remind me I have to lie, to cover her lie about being taller than she actually is. As if people don't have eyes and won't spot the lie, but anyway. Now, in all my life, I cannot recall a single incident where anyone called me short to insult me. Not once. The other day my cousin was complaining yet again about how she hates being short for all kinds of reasons, including the fact that the moment she gets into an argument with anyone, the first insult that comes out of their mouth is you short, followed by some X-rated word. 
but short is always the key word. Again, we pretty much have the same height. The only reason absolutely everyone calls her short and no one ever insults me using my height is the fact that I don't see mine as good or bad in any way while she's obsessed with hers. So what are the consequences of everyone is you pushed out? Let's take a look at what changes when we operate from this concept and how it gives us a new freedom when it comes to manifesting. First of all, everyone is you pushed out means that there is no competition ever. If everyone is you pushed out, then there is never any competition. Because who are you competing with? Yourself. Your competition is just you pushed out. Mirrors that reflect your own insecurities, your own need to prove yourself, your own belief that you have to hustle if you want to succeed, and other such beliefs. A second consequence is that you cannot violate anyone's free will. One of the most controversial topics in both magic and manifestation circles is that of free will and whether it's bad to violate it and try to force someone else to do what you want them to do. If you go about it that way, meaning if you try to directly make someone do something they don't want to do, you may be in for a long-term work because people often feel it when you try to push them and they push back. But that's only if you push them. When you understand that everyone is you pushed out and there is no pushing and there's no free will you're violating, because you understand that all you have to do is dissolve or change the part of you that creates the person as it is now in order to change them. You're not violating anyone's free will because you aren't doing anything to them or on them. You're not changing them. You are changing you. And they will also change in reflection of the changed you. Another consequence is that no one gets hurt. A thing many people worry about is causing harm in the process of manifesting their desires. That's why many people often don't even try to manifest something unless they feel that they have a legitimate need for it. Or they focus their efforts on broad concepts like love, peace or money, for example, instead of asking for exactly what they want. Or they leave it up to a higher power like God, the universe or their spirit guides to decide what's best for them. Here's the thing though. If you operate from everyone is me pushed out, you don't need to worry about harming anyone. Why? Because you aren't changing anyone. You're only changing yourself. Just like you're only changing yourself if you decide to start eating more healthy food instead of junk food, you're only changing yourself if you decide to change a person or situation by changing the part of you that manifests it in your reality the way it is now. My guess is you don't worry about anyone coming in harm's way when you pass on the cheeseburgers and have salad. So you don't have to worry about anyone coming in harm's way if you skip the negative thoughts that manifest someone's bad behavior towards you either. So now that you know what everyone is you pushed out means, it's your turn. What are some things you would like to change? Maybe it's a pattern that up until now kept repeating in your life that you want to break. Or maybe you want someone to start complimenting you. Whatever it is, change the part of you that's creating it by choosing to believe and imagine something different. Persist in it and you will see your reality change to reflect that. If you enjoyed this video, then hit the subscribe button below and comment, like and share.